Hello my soccer universe. I actually planned on showing you another of the jerseys, national team jerseys in my collection, uh, but then I need to do this type of video to get to get it off my chest because uh, it has been the frustration about the Austrian national team has been growing in me uh, more and more and I've mentioned it in comments on some of my previous videos and with uh, chats uh, with subscribers. It is a uh, rather sad state of affairs when it really should should not be and the public support for this national team is actually almost uh, you know comparative to the squad strength is probably as low as it has been in over 15 years or whatever uh, let me preface this by saying that the Austrian national team anyway is has great support when they doing really well and is really the butt of jokes when they don't do well and I have to say for most of the time that I'm a football follower the Austrian national team has been more on the part of re ridicule I mean one of my first my first memories them qualifying for the 1990 World Cup and having a great preparation uh, flopping at that World, World Cup greatly it was rather disappointing and then it was the first game after the World Cup playing the Fairy Islands in who played their first ever competitive game uh, not even in the Fairy Islands but in Landskrona in Sweden and losing that one one nil. And that basically settled uh, the love of the love hate relationship with the national team. I'm doing all of this also two days after the 22nd birthday of the other big event, 27th of March in 99. Austria loses to Spain 9 0, a game where they were talking ahead of it that they might actually win this one. So, you know, can take a guess there. For this video, I decided to wear my latest acquired, but not the, it's the second oldest uh, Austrian German collection, is the black uh, 2006 07 uh, weight jersey, uh, long sleeve player issue. It's really nice, and this is how I would expect a black Austrian jersey to be. I don't necessarily expect a black Austrian jersey, I want white and red, those also took two colors, but I think black is, is as a third alternative a, a really good one. But uh, you see here, it's black, it has the nice eagle crest on there, it has a little bit red on the back, which is maybe not that necessarily needed. It does the job, it does the job that uh, it does do and doesn't need to do any turquoise or whatever pattern that the new one has and then a weird uh, logo, which is another video in itself, but we'll come to that logo. So yeah, um, what I wanna, the message in this video is, and it's more or less in the title, at the moment I cannot really support the Austrian national team. Uh, and it's really, really sad because I think that at the moment Austria has, at least in my time, and that is since 89 that I've been following the national team, I would argue Austria has the most talented squad in their history. deep the Austrian squad is at the moment. Uh, every position there is at least one alternative. Um, most of the players play at good teams in the German Bundesliga. Uh, some play also in France and so on. Uh, you know, but uh, none of them is really a bit part player. Some of them are, not all of them are. And if one is far from falling away, there's always an alternative to come out. Even in the Bundesliga, uh, the Austrian Bundesliga, is um, very well in supplying uh, players, especially through Salzburg and Lask at, at this moment, less through the Viennese teams, which is probably why a little part of why the current Austrian national doesn't uh, get as much support within Austria, because the Austrian national tradition was always made of the two big Viennese teams, and at the, at the moment it's just not the case. But that is also very much behind why I find this currency situation so galling that we're in. Uh, why is that? Well, we have to move back. Um, in the build-up in 2014-15, uh, to, to in this qualification campaign for Euro 2016, the Austrian national team was not as deep, but they had a coach in Marcel Koller, who already uh, was there since 2012. 
who actually gave the team a new identity and actually what he managed to build is it was an idea it was badly managed before uh of somewhat talented players but you know uh with coaches that didn't were not necessarily technical geniuses they were still of the old type uh you know of especially coaches that were players before from the 80s and the 90s where we see that they not always i mean yes we have the guardiola's and so on but most of those players they still uh grow they want to do the things as it was done in the 80s and the 90s which cannot happen anymore um and this was really uh glaring there and also the tactics for the longest of times i mean austria has always tried to copy what Germany does, uh, especially uh, in the wake of the big win in 78. I mean, this goes but at that far back uh, at the World Cup over, Ger over Germany in a game that really didn't matter, matter for a World Cup, but we made sure that the Germans didn't even go to the third place playoff by winning, winning again against them. And it's still one of the biggest games. It still has a huge um impact on today's scene in austria uh everyone knows about that game it's the biggest one um but yeah the system was three at the back with one so-called libero out of franz beckenbauer except that this was really just a pure sweeper in most of, of the cases because we didn't have a really franz beckenbauer then a midfield and then two strikers up front so a three five two that uh rather yeah non-excitedly uh, played but sometimes grounded results sometimes really got into trouble and one of those times that it really got into trouble was this famous 9-0 where to this day the coach who is now an expert on tv he's saying yeah we had a bad day and spain had a, had a great day when if you look at it a technical analysis spain really attacked exactly the weaknesses that the austrian team had austria against uh similar opponents uh, in strength could do well at the time but were if outmatched it never looked uh, good and then came the big downfall for the Austrian national team and I think it was Marcel Koller that really re resurrected the team I mean in Euro 2008 there were calls for Austria not being in there so Marcel Koller gave the team an identity he actually gave them a playing style uh, that every team that every player in there could execute to a T and let's say he had a squad of 14 15 players not everything doubled that could execute this very well and it was you know this uh forward playing pressing and so on style uh with the big downside and it worked to a t especially in 2014 um when we had those three home, home games a euro qualifying against sweden montenegro and russia uh two wins and a draw uh, that austria set and really themselves apart in that group and went on and i think they won nine and only drew the first one to qualify for the euros expectations sky high a little bit mismanagement there with choosing the you know the base maybe in the wrong spot uh also relying and this is also a threat relying too much on players that um deserved it because they were at the they were good in qualifying but not necessarily fit and yeah a little bit bad luck as well uh but in, in the end i think austria did not deserve to go on although they could have if they would have gotten uh something against um Iceland there but you know um, the big thing was that Austria had not only one way of playing then Master Cole in, in World Cup qualifying and I have to say especially in 2016 we did not win we lost to Serbia and Belgrade we lost at home to uh, Ireland and I think we uh, drew only against we withdrew on all only against Wales and this was the last time that the Austrian national team really had big 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 support within the country but I have to say most of this game also was not the worst team it was just that they tried to be a little bit more adaptive and and so and most of the time played actually quite well but it didn't really click it was this clear transition in there but there was still a good idea the problem was that uh still there was a plan a where Austria was very well prepared for uh the opponent but then they had to flip it around and then the opponent made, made, made changes and suddenly it didn't work anymore this was the classic pattern there and instead of sticking with Marcel Koller who of course got a big contract extension uh, they decided to blow every, everything up and there is a whole lot of things uh, coming with it because um, the sporting director Willy Rutensteiner who is now the coach of Israel who, he, who had been uh, instrumental in transforming the Austrian national team from a rather uh, 
badly playing, you know, old fashioned team into a modern uh, team with a good concept that also was carried down to the lower levels of re recruitment. Uh, in addition, he, he made with this academy system. I will tie this also now back la later on as well to uh, come, 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 come back to that. But um, he kind of made it all too scientific. And there you have to know that the Austrian Football Federation uh, is largely governed by the presidents of the nine provinces, of, of the fair uh, federations of the nine provinces. Whenever there's a decision made, it is the Bundesliga, it is the nine presidents, all of whom do this not for pay, they just get elected in, in this job because it's a nice job to have. They don't necessarily have expertise. And I think the president has a vote. And I think that uh, that is about it. So. Uh, this professional structure that was built on there, many of those presidents, because it was all designed to give them a little bit less power, did not happen. Then the Austrian, the president of the Austrian Football Federation, who was standing behind this team, once it started to crumble a little bit, he needed to save his skin and he sacrificed the sporting director. In an absolute farcical decision, the sporting director, who everyone said made the perfect representation with, 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 with the concept, was voted out. And Peter Schöttl, a uh, defender from the 98 team, never a flair player. He was a poor sporting director at Rapid. He was elected in. And together they needed to find a new coach. And he came up with a list of coaches that to this day, I do not know how he came up with, with this list. There were some interesting German co co coaches, was more, mostly second tier. But that would, would, have, would have been interesting. But the final candidates were Andreas Herzog, who had... The best experience that he had was the co-trainer of the U.S. national team and a little bit with the under 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 and everyone said, yeah, he, he, he's the future uh, coach of the Austrian national team when he has no credit whatsoever. And he never, he's one of those that really, um, he likes to have it, to have things served to him in a way. And so he never actually uh, bothered to uh, coach a club team. Then... Um, what is I think uh, from a former German player who was for Austria, uh, absolutely none. And then Franco Foda, who had good success with Sturm Graz. However, uh, the success he had with a mentality of really shutting up shop on the back and then, you know, not playing exciting football. And this where is where things break. This is where things break. This great generation that I've been talking about for Austria is largely based on this Red Bull school uh, of playing soccer, football, however you want to call it. I continue calling it soccer and that I, that there's a video on my channel up, up there where I can explain that other way. It's a proper, it's a proper football gun that originates in England. That's all I'm saying. So um, you might like or dislike Red Bull. I am squarely on the dislike side, but I have to give them credit. The latest when they hired Ralf Rannick uh, as the overarching director of football um, in the mid 2010s or so, um, they formed an identity and this identity is based on what Klopp is doing, what uh, Jogi Löw was doing, having a modern style of play, meaning high press. We know we are maybe not technically as gifted as the Spaniards, however, we can run, 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 we can fight and we can be nasty to our opponents. And almost everyone coming out of that Red Bull school is made to a T to work in that style very well. Then Salzburg was very successful, started to gain international success. I, I, I remember it was 2000, 2015 when they completely annihilated Ajax in the Europa League. This was kind of this big eye-opening moment for all of them. This is when we all realized here in all Austria, what Salzburg is doing is actually really successful and really good. Uh, yeah, there's still the naysayers that want to, but there is something really good growing there. And you can then do like the Venice club to complain yet, yeah, but they have all, all the money, they can do it easy, they can get the good players, or you do it the way that Wolfsburg and Lask is doing it. Try to copy that as good as, as you can. And the three teams as of late that have been really successful in Austria are Wolfsburg, Lask and Salzburg. They're also doing well in Europe. And I think Sturm Graz is starting a similar project now. So this style of playing, this uh, German style, 
and for once it was right to copy the German, the German, the German style there, uh, really transformed the Austrian game. Many players go to the Bundesliga. The players in the national team, they have most of them had, uh, were playing in the Hoffenheim under Nagelsmann, for instance. They play, of course, from Salzburg, you go to Leipzig, so they're well versed in that style too. Um, and yeah, now, and uh, Alaba can play anything, literally. And then you have a Franco Foda who wants them not to press high, but to hold back. And there was a scene in the game against the Faroe Islands uh, uh, yesterday where Ulmer, the captain of Salzburg, he uh, is dispossessed at the opposition box and he immediately wants to go in the gegen press. And the coach is yelling, why are you doing that? Why are you doing it? Go back, go back, go back. And, and you can see he's completely befuddled because his instinct of playing is to gegen press, to get the ball back. And if we had just a coach, and it doesn't need the best coach, just a coach that is well versed in the concept, and Foda is not. Foda, to his credit, he has a few more technical, technical ideas, but most of it is very conservative thinking. But if we had a coach that is well versed in the Red Bull School, oh, phew, Europe, you have a veritable nasty team to play against. Because this is a unique situation that not many national teams can build on. This is almost like when Spain got so dominant. I'm not saying that Austria will ever be like Spain. But this is such a way that um, all was based on this Barcelona school of playing. Austria has this luxury of playing this Red Bull style. And I'm absolutely sure if we would do that, then Austria is a top 10 team, team in Europe. I'm absolutely convinced of it. Yes, it would not uh, be good enough to, let's say, beat France on a reg regular basis and so on. That never is it. But I think uh, uh, at the years in the group that we currently are, I think we could give the Dutch a real run for the money. However, we are not because we have a coach that's thinking small and not thinking big. He always wants things conservatively instead of really going aggressively forward, which is innate in most of the Austrian players. And so here comes the bad part for me. I want the national team to do well. But in order to do well, Franco Foda has to go. And the only way he signed our extension until the end of this year's uh, World Cup qualification, the only way that he can not continue is if either we completely mess up the Euros, which we will not because we will get one win against Northern Mars, Mar 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 you know, but if we lose there, and actually that's what I should actually, actually, actually hope for, then that's that for him. Um, so either we mess up that, but I think that he will still see out his contract. Uh, the other way is not quali quali qualifying for the, for the World Cup. This hurts because this is, a, this is a generation of players that actually will deserve going to the World Cup. It really hurts of saying it this way, but that's what I have to hope for because the Austrian Football Federation is not going to get rid of him otherwise. And this is a shame. It's an absolute disgrace. That he got, I mean, somehow I understood, I mean, his contract was up uh, by the end of last year, that they extended it. Yeah, through Corona, okay, maybe, maybe, but ah, uh, we need to get rid of this coach. Absolutely. And, uh, but I don't have to trust that the Austrian Football Federation will do the right thing. And this is it. And then, you know, I told you with the, uh, those, the presence of the regions in Austria, Austria always fighting against the uh, president and, and whatever. There's a lot of politics go, going on. When the new federation law, this ugly, I call it spider, it's, it's an eagle, of course, was presented, uh, the idea was yeah, the 10 feathers uh, represent the unity between all the factions and the parts, the, between the Bundesliga and the uh, regional governance. Gave me an effing break. Um, I really want Austria to do well, but at the moment I cannot support this team. And there's a lot to support there, but I cannot because we need to get rid of a coach. And the media that has a little bit of an idea is actually already clamoring against it. And then uh, there was this big media offensive on, on the side of the Austrian. Okay, please stop it. We're at least winning now. Yes, he has the stats, but it is impossible to watch and most of the wins there that we got that he still are uh, in the friendlies uh, before and right after the World Cup. Uh, everything as soon as the Nations League the first one started it was ugly and you could not watch it and we ground out the results I mean just qual qualifying for over the years in the group with Poland, uh, Israel, Slovenia, uh, Northern Macedonia 
and what was the smallest team? One more, more, more team India. But you have to go, I think it was Liechtenstein, you have to qualify from this group. And we barely did it. We should have challenged Poland. And we just got a second spot. I mean, this was minimum requirement. So yeah, you see, I'm. it's not a good sign. It's not a good showing. And yeah, I need to get that off my chest. That anyone, when I say Austria is not doing well, here's the reasons why. I might still show you uh, jersey uh, to the uh, uh, Tuesday or, or whatever. Let's see how, how it's going. Let, let me know if you know of a situation similarly to this one. I heard Belgium uh, has similar, but I think Belgium is qualitatively uh, above Austria. And I think that with Roberto Martinez, they have not the greatest coach. Yeah, I think Belgium called also, also, also better, but uh, it's. Uh, what, what I really get is we have so many players that are well versed in one style of playing that is proven to be for uh, smaller teams really effective against bigger teams and you see it every Austrian team uh, in Europe, the three that, no, not every, the three that I've told you, they have been doing really well over the past few years and the Austrian league thanks to that is actually rising in the UEFA rankings, the national team is not. So yeah. Let me know what you think, think about this, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and yeah, I'll talk to you soon about happier things. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, consider subscribing to my channel, as it will give you all updates, all things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye!